Focus on the final score. You imagine yourself uh, in a rugby game or a basketball game or a football game. If somehow you knew with an absolute certainty the final score of the game before you started and that you would win based upon one condition. And that one condition is that you give it your honest best effort. A perfect effort? No. You're allowed a few turnovers, you're allowed a few penalty flags, you're allowed a few fouls along the way. We all make mistakes. But the real key is, as a coach, I manage the whole game. I, I consider my role as a coach to teach, to be an example, to motivate, to inspire my players and to manage the game. Now the players responsibility is to learn, to teach others, to motivate themselves, to motivate them others and then and then play the game. And we we ask for you you play with perfection, knowing of course that we make mistakes, but we have a lofty goal. So just how would it affect your attitude if you knew with an absolute certainty the score of the game. Let, let me use basketball as an example. People are probably, you're probably more familiar with basketball than you are with rugby. Can you imagine in a basketball game, if you knew that you're going to win, you knew the score before the game started based upon your effort. Suppose you're down by 30 points at halftime. Are you going to panic? Are you going to give up? No. You already know the final score. You already know the outcome based upon your effort. Well, what if you're up by 30 points at halftime? Are you going to start coasting? You're going to put it on cruise control? Absolutely not. Because you know that the outcome, the end, the final score is conditioned upon what? Your effort for the full game. Your honest best effort, even as you make mistakes. Well, suppose you're down by 10 points with 30 seconds to go in the basketball game. Do you give up? Do you panic? No. You know the final score. And the same thing, you're up by 10 or 20 points with 30 seconds to go. Are you even going to coast for 30 seconds? Absolutely not. Because you know that the final score is conditioned upon what? Your effort, your best effort. And that, that's the one thing that, I, you know, the, the first principle I would say is focus on the final score. Okay, for young people, it's the first quarter of your life. Okay, maybe you've made some mistakes. Maybe you got a couple penalty flags along the way. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's learn from that. Let's not repeat them. But let's not throw in the towel because we're focusing on the final score of your life. Now, we don't know the final score of basketball games, but I'll tell you, we know the final score of our life based upon the moral and ethical principles, integrity and honesty. I tell these boys, you lose your integrity, you lose your honesty, you have lost everything. You're the poorest man I know. You, you have nothing. My children have the right to an honorable father. My wife has the right to have a husband with integrity. That doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. I do make mistakes. But I try to learn from them. I try not to repeat them. The young men who play on the Highland rugby team have the right to an honorable coach, to a coach who has integrity and honesty and has hard work and hopefully pass those values on. Now don't make any mistake, we don't baby our players, we're pretty intense, but our coaching style is so different. We don't swear at the players, we don't yell and scream at the players. You know, I hear some coaches say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to motivate them. Well, motivation is very important and you can be intense, you can be focused, and you want to help young men and players correct the mistakes they're making on the field and off and not make them again. But there's no such thing as negative motivation. I've seen coaches absolutely destroy players. They rip them apart. They yell and berate them. For what purpose? Well, I'm just trying to motivate them. No, you can't do the Lord's work in the devil's way. You can't do that. Now, you can terrorize a player, and you can get a short-term behavior change out of him, but you'll never capture his heart 
And when the chips are down, he's not, he's not going to do it for you. There's no commitment there. You know, you, you, look, at, you look at history. Um, uh, you hear stories of, of soldiers, men and women, who've thrown themselves on a grenade for their, for their comrades. You, hear, you look at the early history of our country and people who made incredible sacrifices. Signing the Declaration of Independence was a death sentence. Yet they did that. Why? And why does someone throw themselves on a grenade? And why in towns and cities across this great nation do men and women, husbands and fathers, sons and daughters, teachers and community members make enormous sacrifices for others? It's because they believe in something bigger than themselves. And when you terrorize a kid, you, or, or an employee, or a player, you can get a short-term behavior change, but they'll never throw themselves on a grenade for you. They'll never sign a Declaration of Independence. And when the chips are down, they won't be there for you. You identify those things and principles, core values, that's the critical question. Who do you want to be?